Hotty toddy, Ole Miss fans, and welcome to the Brad and Chad Show on the OM Network, brought to you by Blue Delta Jeans, made in the USA. This is the show by and for Ole Miss fans, where you'll get expert insight and analysis on Ole Miss athletics. And now, here are your hosts, former Rebels Chad Flowers and retired NFL star Bradley Sowell. Podcast time. Brad and Chad Show, brought to you by Blue Delta Jeans, filming this on January 31st, February right around the corner. The Super Bowl is set. National Signing Day is right around the corner. Ole Miss basketball on the men's side, still looking for more wins in the SEC. Women had a big win in Fayetteville. Talk about that and some more. But first, Bradley Sowell, how are you, man? What's up, Chad? What you been up to, man? You watch you watching playoffs this weekend or what? <laughs> I did, man. You know, being up here uh, in Northern California, uh, obviously a lot of 49ers fans. It was a uh, a pretty rough uh, pretty rough Sunday. I went to a uh, a bar to watch it with some buddies of mine and man, that game got real deflated real quick when you're uh, your I have been in that drink. situation. I have been in that situation and it is not fun, man. We were I say, I so whenever we were we played at Carolina. Uh-huh. Um, I forgot what year it was. One of the years we played at Carolina, and um, we showed up with a guy that we had signed off the streets from from practice squad to to go down to Carolina. And man, it is you know nothing against the guys coming in after, but when you're down to your third guy, oh, that's just a crappy feeling. And you know you can't win. Then the other teams just got they they got all their bullets flying, dude. It's like yeah, it's the worst feeling ever because you did all this, all that work to get there, right? Yeah, I mean. Look, I thought the Eagles were going to win regardless because, yep. you know, Brock Purdy, he's been amazing for the Niners, but I just felt like the Eagles are a more complete team. But, man, the quarterback injuries that the Niners have suffered, I, I saw an interesting stat. There have been two – so Brock Purdy tore his UCL on Sunday. There have been two UCL tears by quarterbacks in NFL history. Nick Mullins for the Niners and Brock Purdy. For the Niners. And then, of course, you lost mm-hmm. Jimmy Garoppolo, Trey Lance. Um, yeah, it's just been a weird, weird year, last few years for the Niners, especially with injuries. And yeah, that game was pretty much over from the get go. Uh, yeah, once the, Eagles, you, the Eagles are legit. They're they look legit. good. I mean, you got, you got Indomitian and Sue coming off the bench, pass mm-hmm. rushing. Like, they're just, dude, they're, they're impossible to block up there. I played in Philly a couple of times. It's one of my favorite places to play. It's really hard to play. The fans are grimy. We beat the hell out of them one year. And there's been a couple of years we went up there and got served. So it's a tough place to play. Whenever they start sacking you and getting crazy, man, that, that place gets to rocking up there. It's probably one of the better sports towns overall in, in, in the country. They just, they care, you know, you could argue too much in some cases, considering all the stories that you've heard regarding Philly fans and how they've treated opposing players, hell Santa Claus and so on and so forth. But yeah, it was just a rocket atmosphere. And I would imagine there's going to be a pretty good Eagle, Eagles contingency in Phoenix for the Super Bowl in two weeks. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. This should be a real good Super Bowl. Now, I saw an interesting – have you been noticing it? And I feel like it looks like offensive linemen are leaving earlier. There's an interesting video with uh, – I think it was Lane Johnson uh, from the Eagles where it looks like the tackle right before the ball snap gets a little bit of a head start. We have a clip of that. Patrick, if you don't mind firing that up. So here's a kind of a shot here. That – that right tackle, it looks like he's leaving a little early. Is that kind of a common thing that you've seen? Or it just feels like it's more prevalent now than it has been in the past, and it's not getting called. No, it's it's been going on forever. Um, there's just a lot of people. There's a lot of more cameras, a lot of social media shit now where mm-hmm. people can actually see it. But it's been going on forever. I mean, it's it, it dude, and it's it, it's so it's so quick. You can't even notice that with the naked eye. You can slow it right. down and notice that. Mm-hmm. But there, there's D linemen too that 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 are you know moving before the ball starts as well that are really good. So you now you just got all this technology where people can see it. But for the most part, man, I mean, it is. It's it's you wouldn't even be able to tell if it was running full speed that that the guys were. It's just the way it works, man. Like you 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 you're on a silent count there. You're looking right, looking left. I mean, you're kind of guessing, you know, all, off movement. So it's been going on forever. It's really not. It looks bad in the video, but it's not as blatant as blatant as it looks full speed. Yeah, the the officials got a lot of criticism for both games in the NFC and AFC championships, and rightfully so in some regards. But you're right; I I, I do feel like that things get magnified a lot more considering yeah, yeah. the the technology that's in place, uh, where we're able to slow things yeah, down. Jim, Jim McMahon on. once told me one time that if the '85 Bears had the technology they have now, 
he'd probably be in prison somewhere. So <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you, you can pretty much find it, find anything now. So um, yeah, it, 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 it's not as big a deal. I mean, there, there's D linemen that know how to jump stuff. It's, it is I mean, tackles. Tackles are always the hardest, right? Cause you're always so far down and tight ends even worse. I'm a tight end. I couldn't never get off the ball and even hit a guy. It was insane. Like, I don't know how tight ends actually block, um, but you can't, I mean, it's so far down there. It's hard to like time it up. Perfect but it's as close as you can get. And the the refs don't call unless it's just blatant, unless it's just yeah. like out there. Yeah, and you got A.J. Brown now, obviously, with the Eagles, going to get a chance to play in the Super Bowl, yep. uh, like we mentioned, in two weeks. So it, it'll be good to see uh, him play. He's just – it feels like one of the better trades in NFL history, what wow. they got for – um, you know, what the Titans were, were getting for A.J. Brown. I don't know how you let, let a guy like that go. Is, he is, is a, Alabama he's a and Ole Miss about to lead the Eagles to the Super Bowl or what? It I definitely mean. feels like it, right? You got Jalen Hurts, Devontae. I get, all right, let me ask you this. Is Jalen Hurts Oklahoma or is he Alabama, right? I, I, Alabama's loving to claim him right now, even though they kind of they, they yeah. graduated two out of the starting spot. But, you know, with Devontae Smith and some of the others, it's – um. There's I'm going to say this, I'm gonna say this and it's not going to be a popular opinion. Jalen Hurts is good, right? But Philly's yeah, loaded, loaded around him. <laughs> I'm, I mean, he he does – his stats aren't crazy, right? He has very just solid, good stats. What he does a good job of for them, it's not necessarily his throwing. A lot of his passes are shit in the game. A lot, a lot of stuff he does is just so-so. But what he does really, really well is he takes care of the football yeah. and he makes, he, he makes extra downs. Like, it, it's unbelievable that he is – what I like about him at quarterback is how, like – I mean, he's just so good with the ball. Like he doesn't. He seems like he's either making the right read or he's or he's being safe with it. And he he is playing just how you need to play. He doesn't. He doesn't need to be a Superman on that roster. Right. He just controls the game. He's he. But but he's he's better than a game manager. I'm not going to give him that. Now, mm-hmm. He's a hell. Of, he can make the throws. He definitely. But but he's not like a Tom Brady type thrower or an Aaron Rodgers type thrower. But he's really freaking good at running that offense. And. He is he he's he's got it down pat. I mean, he's going to win money as long as they keep that together. They'll I mean they're going to win there forever because you got um, Smith and AJ Brown, who are young guys. I mean those three together are going to be are ridiculous. And then you got a you know defense is is um, loaded with with Reddick, who was ended up you know coming on strong. He ended up being the player that um, you know the Arizona thought he was going to be. So um, it's just yeah, it hurts us. He's got it. He's he's figured it out. I wish more guys would figure it out like him. The only knock that I'll give Philadelphia is. I don't know how tested they've been this year. If you just look at the playoffs, they played the Giants, who had a good season. I think they overperformed. And Daniel Jones is, I'm not going to say he's a superstar by any stretch of the imagination. And then you beat Josh Johnson and, you know, the 49ers couldn't throw the ball in the second half. Yeah, that was, right? that was wild. That was wild to see. I almost wish they would just called the game. Yeah, four, it was, well, can I just forfeit? Like, you were running the ball in third and 10 and stuff or whatever, third and 15. So it feels like... I actually think the Chiefs, who we'll talk about here in a second, I actually like the Chiefs because of Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and I think that's going to be a better test for Philadelphia. You know, the what Philadelphia Philly obviously- does what Philly does though is very hard to beat, and it's exactly what Seattle had all those years. They can run the damn football. They can't they run the ball. Physical ass O line, and they freaking get after you on defense. They got pass rushers galore, and. That's just tough to beat, man. When you can, their O line is physical as shit. They got the really good O line, and that's what Seattle had all the all those years up um, when they were really good. And it's almost it's almost a similar looking team because I mean Russell mm-hmm. Wilson and Jalen Hurts play about similar. You know, mm-hmm. for for the longest time, they can make good throws. They're good players, but they really have it figured out when it comes to 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 taking care of the football and and kind of right in the ship. You know. And um, and they, they do stuff when they have to, but they don't have to be the winner, the one that wins the game the whole time. But that's why, dude, Philly's gonna be tough, man. They're physical as shit. They are. I mean, they are, and like you mentioned, their offensive line is probably top three in the NFL because I think they've ran for. They they I, I want to say they came close or they set a record for rushing touchdowns this year, and which is crazy considering how pass heavy the NFL has become. They just run the ball right down your throat, and it's going to be interesting to see how Kansas City is able to stop it. But they do have a pretty good defensive line of their own. I mean, Chris Jones is he is a problem. Yeah, you got Frank uh, Clark too. Frank's very very good. Yeah, I played Seattle. He was he's a really good player as well. What was your assessment of the AFC Championship game? The the Chiefs beat the Bengals twenty three twenty. Um, last second field goal. What? How did you feel that game went ultimately? Um, maybe a little bit rigged. I don't know. I mean, it, <laughs> no, I'm not. I can't. I, I'm, I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put the ten full hat on here. No, no I'm kidding. they. Um, I mean, dude, that's just that play that guy made on the sideline is, is just can't happen. Like that. That's the only thing I can think of when I think of that game. I'm like, are you kidding me? 
Uh, are you saying like that, that? Are you saying that the, the the penalty can't be called, or the guy can't push Patrick Mahomes when he's obviously yeah. out of bounds? Yeah, that's the dumbest fucking play I've ever seen okay. in my life. Like, yes. like, 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 let's be real. Like, like, surely somebody in the locker room. I, mean, I think he's a first year guy. I feel like if I would have got a personal foul, let me be honest. I feel like if I would have got a personal foul again with that. Somebody would have beat the shit out of me in the locker room. Somebody that really cared. Because this, this ain't Pee Wee anymore. You got to think. Every the, the, no, no, I'll give you the reality of that play, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I, I'm gonna give you roundabout figures about when I was in there. So every player just lost a chance to make one hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's coaches everything when it comes to bonuses. Not to mention your rings, probably thirty something thousand. Not to mention your wife or your spouse gets a, a necklace of some sort if you win of another ten or fifteen thousand. So that push may have cost every um, swing and dick on that sideline. Mm-hmm. You know. $150,000 or maybe even more and a chance to win the Super Bowl. So, I mean, that, that, that's all I think about when I think about that game. I'm like, man, that's just the goofiest play I've ever seen. Like, it's, it's, it's bad. Bad. Yeah. Ball. I mean, yes. Joseph Asai pushing Patrick Mahomes blatantly. Yeah. You have to call that every time. But I think some blame needs to be placed on the, uh, the Cincinnati offensive line. Uh, this was an interesting stat. Joe Burrow was under pressure 43% of his dropbacks on Sunday. His average time to throw, 2.6 seconds. He was getting just bum-rushed by Kansas City the entire game. He had zero time to throw the ball. Some of that can be on coaching, though. The common fan says, hey, zero time time to throw it, but you're at the loudest. So the Chiefs and the Seahawks are the loudest stadium Mm -hmm. in football, right? Yep. Like you have to game plan better. That's why that's why McVay is so good at, at, with the Rams, right? Because he does a good job of like keeping his O lineman out of these situations where it's like you can't drop back that many times and just expect to hurl the ball with versus a good pass rusher in the loudest stadium in football, not to mention it's cold. So yeah, the O line's got to do better. But at the end of the day, like you got to put them in better situations too. Like it's, I mean, it's, you can't just sit there and drop back a gazillion times. I did feel like Joe Mixon was a little underutilized because he's a stud, just like, yep. you know, just like Joe Burrow, just like Jamar Chase. T. Higgins. I mean, they've got a lot of tools on the offensive side of the ball, but it did feel like that they just kind of went away from Joe Mixon, who who yeah, can absolutely but, control the game. And if you go on to. the road in the NFL, you have to play good defense, not turn the ball over, and you have to establish a run game versus a good team. If you can't, you don't have any hope. I mean, you really don't. So, and Joe Burrow turned the through a few picks. Um, you know, they were still in the game. That's what's crazy. And, but I mean, you, you can't have turnovers, and you got to be able to run the football. Let me put, I want to put you on the Cincinnati sidelines. So as soon as Joseph Asai makes that play, you're a teammate. Honestly, what are you doing? Well, I was never in a position where, I mean, I, I would say stuff, but I was never that guy. But right. I played with some guys that that uh, I know would, wouldn't have been very happy. So, you know, and, and that, that's not like, like the coach says, not the only thing that cost them. But, you know, I also, I also was on a team where a guy hit a freaking field goal right off the damn field goal post that cost everybody, you know, 46000 Not as much as that, but – you know, every and, and, and it's not important. Some players, that's not a lot, but there's coaches, you know, or, or, or trainers or assistants that 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 would be a lot for. You know, mm-hmm. like like that forty six. They're not making forty six thousand dollars a week. Like some guys are making a million right. dollars a week, right? So, um, you know, I, I personally wouldn't say anything. I'd be a little pissed. Um, I wouldn't say anything, but I know there are guys out there that are not as kind and that have much larger egos. That I, I mean, I'm sure somebody. May have said something, and you also have the crowd that hugs him. It's like, okay, whatever, it's a game. But there's also the the really fiery crowd too, as you can see. I mean, hell, you got Diggs for the Bills that was screaming at his quarterback for not throwing the ball. Imagine if you push someone out of bounds. I mean, he's probably going to fight you in the locker room. So, yeah, I've, I've seen it all. I do think that we need to give Patrick Mahomes credit for that play too, considering he was on a bum ankle and yeah. just gutted it out to try to get that first down. And then, of course, he was pushed out of bounds to give them 15 yards. But, dude, he is. From a talent perspective alone, he's special. He's, he, he's probably going to be the most talented quarterback we're going to see in our generation, just in terms of his cre- – he's Pistol Pete on yeah. a football field and the way he's able to make any throw from any arm angle. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a great example. Successful. He's a great example of when you actually – whenever you are the – whenever you learn an offense so well – Mm-hmm. That that you really can take it to another level. So so there's there's the base offense. The base offense is when you open up that book, every line on the page is drawn perfectly, and then there's there's a plays within the plays, right? Mm-hmm. Like there there there's like, hey, if I get this, if I if I know it's cover two, and Kelsey's really good at this too, I know I know I'm going to change up my route based on what yeah. defense they give me, and that's what the, and I've been in that offense until I had the whole playbook. Um, but in that offense, it gives the receivers a lot of different options, option routes, and stuff, and they're really good at knowing 
when to run the right stuff in the right situations. And it's, it's better than anybody I've ever seen him. Mahomes just, I mean, it just looks like he sees it all. I mean, he's one of those quarterbacks who when he drops back, I mean, he see, I think he knows where everybody is. And, and he's, he's just, man, he's special, dude. He's special, but at the same time, he really understands that offense. So he can kind of go out there and distribute the ball and, and essentially be the point guard. It feels like when he's scrambling, Travis Kelsey always finds a way to get open every single time. And, you know, we talk about how talented, you know, Patrick Mahomes is, but Travis Kelsey is the most talented tight end we're going to see just in terms of his size, his speed. Yeah. He is an incredible difference maker at the tight end position. It's, he, it's, plays, in, he plays the game amazing. Like he has the best instinct ever out there. Like he, he mm-hmm. knows, I mean, he's, he knows where to find every window. He's switching up stuff. He, I mean, I, I listen, I listen to him and his brother's podcast all the time and he talks about it. I mean, you know, there's different there's different ways to play, and he just I mean he does his thing out there. And, and obviously, when I was with Coach Nagy, we watched a bunch of their film because that's the offense we ran. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, Kelsey wasn't supposed to do this, but you know what? He did it, and we end up just putting in the offense because that was better. <laughs> that was better for all. So having a player that that does stuff like that is you know really good. Not to mention, dude, if he catches it up the seam, you ain't catching him. Like that dude can run, mm-hmm. and he's huge. So um, yeah, <laughs> did you see him last night to the um, Cincinnati mayor? Oh my God! Oh yeah, he said it was better. But, when but, but then I went back and looked at what the mayor said. Now the mayor, the mayor basically said that that there should be a paternity test because Joe Burrow may be Patrick Mahomes' daddy. And I, so I mean, <laughs> you got to go back and watch that video of the mayor. Now the the um I, I, he deserved it, and you know the mayor even came out and he said, "Hey, like I deserve that." You know, congrats <laughs> to the Chiefs. I thought it was really good. There was a lot of shit talking in this game, and you know some of it can be tr- attributed to a former rebel, right? Mike Hilton has been kind of credited with calling Arrowhead Burrowhead, considering that Patrick Mahomes had never beaten Joe Burrow in the last you know three years or however many times they've played. So that was a really that was that made it more fun. I feel like considering that, hey, this is I like a little shit talking. I'm not you know yeah. I enjoy it. I, I I like some some boastfulness and some playing around. I, wish out there. There. I honestly wish there was more, right? Yeah. Like, like that- like every time I, I said this last week, every time the UFC starts talking shit, I go buy a ninety nine dollar pay per view, yeah. and, and I and I watch one fight. It's the last one. It's the was the mm-hmm. one like, and, and I don't want to pay ninety nine dollars for a freaking UFC pay per view. But dude, they've been talking shit all week. Now I have to watch them fight, right? So I wish the NFL would do a little more of it too. I, I'm I, I I hate the keep it classy crowd. So because I am, if I get if I have the privilege of being able to go nuts when something that my team does well then by God, the person that actually does the performing, he should be able to go crazy and celebrate as well, man. Have fun with it. It's a it's a game. Yeah, you're getting paid a lot of money, but dude, you only get to play for so long. This is I your know. life. Have fun playing, and I'm going to talk shit if you're going to talk shit. Let's do it, man. Let's ha- go out there and have yeah. a good time. Pretty much my motto, Chad. Pretty much my motto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, is what, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. You got to have some fun, and, and you're right. It gets gone in the blink of an eye, man. Like It's crazy. Yeah, and anytime you can bust out, uh, you know, the rock to talk to a elected official like the mayor's telling him, you know, calling him a jabroni and telling him to shut his damn mouth, you know, you have to take that opportunity. And it, it was really cool to see Travis Kelsey do that. And I think it's going to be pretty wild to see, you know, obviously they're on offense. You know, his brother play; he's an offensive. I think he's the center for the Eagles. Yeah, center. He's a that's, badass too. He's unreal. That's going to be a pretty cool dynamic too to be able to see uh, two brothers playing for uh, a Super Bowl. That that's going to be pretty wild as well. Yeah, those the, 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 those two run a pretty funny podcast. I'm sure there's going to be some good. Um, well, you know, the Super Bowl. If you, people don't know, you know, you got it's like a bunch of events leading up to it, right? Yeah. The, 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 the actual events during the week may be funner than the actual Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm sure them two will be crossing paths and talking some smack, especially at media days and all that. There'll be there'll be some fun stuff with those two. And I'm glad there's a week off in between. That way, maybe uh, you know, I'm sure Patrick uh, Mahomes is ailing right now with his ankle. That'll hopefully give him enough time because you know you definitely want to see the best added uh, for a championship game. So I would wow. really, I really hope they're all going at full strength. Come uh, you know, two weeks. He'll be ready to go. They got plenty of things to make it where you can't feel that ankle. <laughs> nice cortisone shots or whatever it takes in the ankle there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that'll be pretty cool. You know, Brad and Chad show brought to you by blue Delta jeans. Remember blue Delta jeans handmade in the USA to fit you and only you visit them. Blue Delta jeans.com to find your fit using, uh, their easy to use virtual tailor. Um, you know, the let's, let's 
switch gears a little bit over to the football side. We don't have a ton of news uh, regarding transfer portal, anything along those lines. But you know, signing day is tomorrow. Recording this on Tuesday, but the big national signing day. But it's, it's not as big as it used to be, considering you got the early period in December. But uh, tomorrow will be national signing day, and you know the Rebels picked up a pretty interesting commit today. Defensive lineman, defensive end specifically from Lakewood High School in Florida. I think you said that that was in the St. Petersburg area. So mm-hmm. normally we wouldn't bring this up because he have not signed yet. But what was interesting to me is this guy's 6'7". His name is uh, Chamberlain Campbell, which is already one of the better names on the roster, assuming mm-hmm. he signs tomorrow. But 6'7", 215 pounds. So you're basically talking a rail. Surprising he's not playing basketball or choosing yeah, to play basketball. We could use him. We could probably use him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we could probably he could probably start for us right now, considering how the basketball team's playing. But when you hear six seven, two fifteen on the line, specifically an edge rusher, what are you thinking from an offensive lineman's perspective? Yeah, you know what? I, I watched, I went on there and watched his little highlights or whatever. Man, he's got some juice and he, he's really athletic. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like most of the time, what you look for with a really tall guy, six, seven guy, I want to see if he's stiff or, or mm-hmm. how he moves. But man, he really redirected um, fast, he re- really good redirection, uses his hands well. Um, so the, the way I see it, man, I mean, six, seven, maybe get him up to maybe hopefully 245 or 250. Mm-hmm. And then you got a pretty decent little edge, little edge guy there. Um, he's got some juice. I mean, as you can see, a lot of teams really started to come on there at the end, right? Like, yeah, he wasn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't a three-star prospect. When you start looking at his offers, you're like, man, that six, seven frame, that, that adds up pretty well. So Miami, Auburn, Florida can state run, can run mm-hmm. too. Like a good look, good looking little athlete, man, retraces, chase down quarterback. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, put some weight on them, you know, and, and should be to help, especially those long arms, right? They, you, it's really hard to block a long arm guy. So, um, I, I like it. I mean, it's definitely somebody I'd be excited about. You know, they always talk about leverage on the on the lines. I would imagine that that's probably not going to be his go to. You mentioned the long arms. I would imagine that's going to have to be his yeah, game, um, considering that frame. Well, well, on the outside is different, right? Like, mm-hmm. like first off, you you need a pass rusher, right? So, so a big six seven guy that always helps. Um, you know, going against a guy like Clayus Campbell. Some of these other really tall guys, man. Like no matter how good you block them, their arms are so long they can just get they can get reach and get their hands up in the throwing lanes, all this other stuff. But um, you know, uh, on the edge, man, you can you can. There's ways of using leverage with your hands and stuff like that as well. So it, it, I'd be more concerned if it was a six seven interior guy, which they, that they they do exist and, and they can be just as hard to block. But if you're an edge rusher, man, I mean, you should be you should be able to get enough leverage to hold off a tackle because tackles are probably six seven as well. Yeah, and so we'll have a little bit more information regarding what the full signing class looks like next week, considering that will all happen tomorrow, February 1st. So, you know, stick to the Brad and Chad show. We'll try to fill you in on everything next week on next week's show. But yeah, well, I found this to be pretty interesting considering you don't see 6'7", 215 from a, you know, a, from a, a college perspective, getting a player like that was pretty interesting. So I wanted to definitely talk about that. You know, we talked about how he could probably help us on the basketball side. Another thing that I found interesting, I don't know if you've been following the baseball team and some of their, you know, uh, off-season scrimmages leading up to the preseason, but, you know, Malone, Taiwan Malone, you know, he's also a football player. He's also on the baseball team. Dude was hitting missiles, moonshots. Interesting, man. Past I saw weekend. this. Right. So I mean, was, I think. What would you think? Because I'll tell you what I thought. I mean, I. Look, if he wants to fo- if he wants to play baseball and football, I don't know what what angle you're taking here because I think I see some people saying that he should focus on one sport, whether it's football or baseball. Dude, go have fun. It's your college days, man. Go and I, I'm all about having you know because different skills are needed depending on what sport you're playing. Right? Yeah. There's got to be some carryover that'll help you on both sides depending on what sport you're playing at that time. But hey, dude, if you can hit home runs, go out and play for. You know, if you can get get some playing time playing baseball for the national champions, by all means, man, we we can use a DH anyway because I think Kemp Alderman's going to play in right field, so we're going to need someone like him to play DH. Let's do it, dude. Well, here's the thing. I think you said it best, right? Have fun. Yeah. He's getting a chance to play for a national championship baseball team and play football. Does he have the potential in football? Yeah, but let me let's be real here. Like the percentages show that he's not going to make it in either sport, and that's with every player, right? So if he loves baseball and loves football and feels like he can manage them both, do it, right? Mm-hmm. Could 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 he potentially go into football and work out really hard and make it to the next level? Yeah, but if he's got that kind of talent, if you're talented enough to make it to the next level, chances are you are going to make it to the next level, yes. right? 
he's doing plenty. I'm sure he's doing plenty of workouts and all this other stuff to, to stay at that level. So have fun, man. I mean, dude, and, and my, my biggest concern was like, who the hell was pitching to him? <laughs> that's like, true. Yeah, that's true. Who the too. hell was giving up 113 <laughs> mile an hour rockets, three of them in the same scrimmage? I think he hit so, one over 450 too. I'm not sure if I'm more excited about Taiwan Malone or, or, or more concerned about who the hell was pitching to him. So, um, man, but that, I'm not going to lie. So, did you see the videos? The videos were posted yesterday. No, I did not. I'll, I'll it, sure it, sounds, it sounds it sounds like he's he, he it sounds like a bat. The bat has a hole in it. I mean, dude, he hits the ball. He hit the, that. These these are absolute bombs. I'm talking bombs. So, and we'll, and we'll make dude, sure. Well, well, you, you, really, you know, his fourth hit was off the wall. No, I didn't. See. His fourth <laughs> hit. His fourth hit was a single off the wall. It was hit so hard off the wall. It was just a sing, just a just a frozen rope single off the That's wall. Wow. Yeah, so. baseball team. Uh, baseball team gets going next week, uh, so we'll have a preview on our show next week as well to kind of give you an idea of what the uh, the rebels are bringing back, some newcomers because there's some. Man, it's going to be an exciting year. You know, obviously it's going to be hard to top last season, winning a national championship, but they are poised to make some noise. And, and one last thing that I want to mention regarding Malone, you know, the scouts are going to find you regardless of what sport you're playing. I mean, this is a very extreme example, but look at Antonio Gates, right? He was a basketball player in college and he, one of the best, yeah, one of the best tight end in Arkansas. Right. So they're going to find you, you know, regardless of what sport you're playing, if you've got athletic ability, they're going to give you a shot. And, and, you know, we'd like to hear from our fans too. If you've got some comments or some opinions regarding whether or not he should stick to football, baseball, play whatever, you know, let us know. Well, you know, we can discuss that a little bit more. We'd definitely like to hear your opinion on should you see two sport athletes in college? Should you just focus on stay in one lane, right? I mean, that's a big debate that a lot of people have because you are in some ways, some people are playing for a future, uh, an income, and maybe they want to focus that time. But I think you know, you're a college kid, dude. You only get to do it once. Live At the end your of the life, day, that what really matters is making good relationships, good connections, and getting a really damn good education. Yep. And, at the, and if it, all the other stuff adds up, it adds up. Cool. Because I can tell you right now, in my experience in playing, a lot of it, I mean, I would say freaking 50% of it is luck past past the elite talent, right? Mm-hmm. But there, there's some elite guys who are like, hey, they're just, they're destined for this shit. Khalil Mack, Aaron Donald's like, like this is their shit. Mm-hmm. Most for the for the for the bottom probably thirty, I would say thirty five to forty people on the roster. It's just a bunch of decent, athletic dudes that like they're all the same, right? And it requires a little bit of luck. Like you may have to get an injury where you can get in there and play, and then once you get in there and play, you do well for that one time. Like Brock Purdy, I'm gonna tell you what, what Brock Purdy just did is the same thing my my good friend Case Keenum did, right? Mm-hmm. When it was his time to shine, he got in there and showed out. So. It, it, Case Keenum will always have a $5 million a year backup job, three to $5 million backup job because he did well when his time was called, right? If that never happens, who knows if Case Keenum's ever still in the league, right? Brock Purdy just did the same thing for himself. Like he's always has that film out there where people's like, hey, like he's done this once. That means it, it, I should be able to get it out of him as well, right? So that's what it's all about when you get to the league. If you, if you can get there, man, it takes a little luck. There's obviously the leaders that, that belong there that, that, are, that are going to run that shit, but – the rest of you, man, like it just is what it is. You gotta you gotta find some value. You gotta fit in, you know, get in where you fit in because it's 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 it's, it's a toss up, man. Everybody's good. You bring up Brock Purdy. One last thing that I wanted to mention regarding I think the most tragic thing about this situation is I don't feel like the 49ers got the best assessment of Brock Purdy now to know what they have, right? Because this was the best team that they were going to play in the playoffs, assuming they got to the, you know, even if they'd made it to the Super Bowl, probably because the Eagles yeah. are so good. Now he's injured, right? Now, what do they do next year? You still have Trey Lance, who they spent a boatload of assets to get, Mm -hmm. but you also have Brock Purdy, who helped you go on a, what, 12, 13-game win streak. Now, who's the starter, right? They're probably going to be a big competition, but now now you've got Mr. Irrelevant, who was the last pick in his draft, and a number three or whatever pick uh, Trey Lance was in his draft. That now, I think that makes it a little bit more complicated because you didn't get that true assessment of what Brock Purdy yeah. can do um, against you know one of the better defenses in a prime time moment like the NFC Championship game. Well, what, what you like though, what, what you like is when your assets do that, right? Yeah. When you, when you have an asset that wasn't very valuable um, at the mm-hmm. beginning of the year, he was just a draft pick of Mister Irrelevant. Well, he goes in and plays like that. Now you have all kinds of options, right? Like, like you have the, the, the Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy is as valuable as he may ever be. Depend. I mean, assuming he doesn't go on and have this crazy career, but 
he he is he is very valuable right now, and they have options now. You got Trey Lance, you got Jimmy Garoppolo. They have three quarterbacks that have shown they can go win NFL games. Mm-hmm. So now it's up to the GM to strategize. Hey, what's the best? What's the best I can get? Hell, maybe you trade Brock Purdy to a team that actually needs a, a legit starter, and you get some picks, and now you have Trey Lance as your future. Yeah, you, know, you don't know. I mean, he performed well, and that's a great thing for a GM to have. Honestly, I mean, it's like, damn, I have an asset that was just a mystery relevant that's now actually worth something. You know, you know, you actually probably just swung me a little bit. It may have been the best thing that ever happened because his value is still high. Because maybe he doesn't get it. Maybe he, maybe he would have gotten exposed by the Eagles, and now he didn't because he didn't play. So maybe you're right. Maybe his value is at an all time high. Kirk Cousins, that- Kirk Cousins, Robert Griffin yeah. situations with this yeah. is. You would have never known Kirk Cousins who who was who he was if he wouldn't have got in there and double, did what he did. Now he ended up being a decent NFL star, but guess what? They were able to grab some value out of him. Now um, RG three didn't quite work out like I'm sure they were thinking, but um, you know that that that's that's what kind of happens, man. That now now he's worth something. Go out and go out and get you some get something for him. Trade him for something if you think Trey Lance is actually the guy because you don't need to. And you're definitely going to keep Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, you know, you can go draft another guy this next year. And the Garoppolo's a free agent, so that's going to be interesting to see what they yeah, do. Yeah, somebody's going to pick him up. So I mean, yeah, he'll yeah. he'll be a starter somewhere, and then you know, or do you keep Purdy and let him and Trey Lance battle it out, and then you know, losers the backup, and maybe trade him, and I don't know. But um, definitely I, I better to have two quarterbacks than zero. So I mean, I guess yeah. you should be envious of the 49ers. Um, you know, speaking of wealth management, Jeff Griffin with the Stevenson Griffin Group at Baird Wealth, uh, Private Wealth Management. You can go to their group's website at stevensongriffingroup.bairdwealth.com or give them a call, 662-841-1900. Shifting gears to a more somber note, we do need to mention that the basketball team is playing this evening. So by the time you hear this, they will have played. I'm not going to say they probably lost, but considering the trend of this season, they probably probably lost, especially considering who they're playing. Kentucky is coming to Oxford. Uh, One thing I'm worried about is considering the weather in the Oxford area, expecting a lot of sleet. I don't know how many people are going to be in attendance to that game tonight. Um, Hell, even if the weather was good, uh, was good. I don't know if many people would be there either, but you know, the the struggle. What would you do at this point, Chad? What would you do? I mean, how would you handle the situation? Because I know a lot of people were getting unrest about it. You know, Keith Carter has his you know, this is guy. This is Keith's guy. This is Keith's hire. So, is. how would you handle this? Look, I, I don't see a benefit to firing any. I mean, look, nope. what what do you you got to go and get a proven coach? I feel like someone to come in. So, assuming I think we both can agree, Kermit Davis is probably going to be fired uh, at uh, at some point. I don't see the advantage of firing him mid season because. I mean, what does that do, right? Let them let them try to get something going, and I don't see that anything's going to improve. Regardless of more, most more than likely, considering you've got transfer portal, these guys are a lot of them are going to be gone anyway. Regardless yeah. if he goes or stays, let them coach it out. Maybe he does have a track record of being able to be successful, albeit not at Ole Miss, especially the last few years. I just. I let it play out, and then at the end of the season, he's been good to the school, be good to him, let him play it out. I don't see an advantage to firing him midseason because you're probably not looking at an assistant coach as his replacement anyway. So our friend Spirit Ben says that Ole Miss basketball is mm-hmm. one of the worst jobs. He usually says Ole Miss basketball. Why do you think? I mean, we got a good pavilion. Um, I, I don't, I don't understand why Ole Miss would be one of the worst jobs. I mean, it, it, but well, who do, we, who do we attract? Right? I mean, go back and grab Andy Kennedy for God's sakes. I mean, I, that, it was, it was grass was greener on the other side until it wasn't. I think the biggest issue with this job, and hell, you could say the same thing for Mississippi State, is I don't know how good the in-state talent is to you know be able to pick up those easy wins to get someone to stay close to home. Right, you can make the same argument with uh, with softball. Right, fast pitch softball is a relatively new thing in the state of Mississippi. Right, when I was when I went to high school, it was still slow pitch. Fast pitch was just getting going. Right, so I don't know how good the in state talent is to be able to at minimum have a good baseline of people to recruit from. So that's why I think, and hell, let's be honest, football is always going to be king. And now you've got baseball winning a national championship resources to basketball are going to be much more limited compared to other SEC schools. And all the other schools are making a major commitment to basketball. So I would imagine there has to be a business decision in the Ole Miss Athletic Department. We've got a baseball team 
that is probably self-sufficient. I, I would imagine they're profitable considering the attendance that they have, and especially with the atten- uh, with the success that they've recently had. You're probably yeah. focusing a lot of NIL dollars there considering people are going there regardless. Basketball has always been a tough draw in terms of attendance, even when they were successful in the Rob Evans days, even Andy, Ke- uh, Andy Kennedy. Um, I don't. I just don't see a huge commitment, not only to the program but to the fans in general. I just don't see a big level of interest to basketball. Yeah, that's the way I look at yeah. it. Yeah. Well, it's crazy because you you know you would think you know we built the pavilion. I know we were trying to think the mm-hmm. Auburn model. Hey, build a build an arena, then hopefully your basketball program gets better. Um, but yeah, I mean it's just been it's been a grind, dude. And I, I think it's just like anything. If somebody would come in and, and allocate some money to it, right? Like, hey. We got to go buy four or five good players, and, but but if you look at our recruiting class over the last couple of years, they've been some of the better, best rated ones ever. You know, we've had some of the best, the highest rated players ever in the last couple of years come to Ole Miss basketball. That's what's going to get interesting. Over I do wonder years. if Kermit's coaching style has played a role in the lack of success because if you've ever watched an Ole Miss basketball game. The man works harder than anybody ever has coaching a basketball game, but that may be to the detriment, right? Sometimes you just have to let players play because, you know, you can get really tight, uh, especially if you are afraid to make one little mistake and the coach is going to bite your head off. Maybe he needs to loosen the reins. Maybe he sees the writing on the wall and loosens those reins up, and you can actually see what this product could be but I don't know. Sometimes that stuff is just hard to break away from, and I, that could be part of the problem. I'm not a basketball expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I have seen that uh, I've seen a lot of critiques that I think he's he's got he's too much hands on during the game, and he doesn't just let players play to their instincts. Yeah, I can see some of that. I wish I knew enough about it to you know enough about basketball to see. But yeah, we just I just feel like the Andy Kennedy days. We were really you know kind of gunslinging out there and, and, and then players have left and went to other schools and are doing really well. It's just, I don't know. It's just odd. Yeah, yeah. I hate it. Man. I hate it. Cause Kermit's a great guy and everybody loves him in Oxford. So, um, but you know, at the end of the day, it, it only, the only thing that ever matters in any of these sports is winning. I mean, yeah. it, it, I don't care. You can love a guy so much, man. Matt Nagy was one of the coolest coaches ever. They freaking loved him when he came in there and won, but man, when they weren't winning, like you have to just look at him in the eyes and be like, Hey, I love you, man, but it's not personal, but you're just not gonna be a football coach. You know, you it, know, the, it, the Andy Kennedy situation is a perfect, be careful what you wish for type thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, yes, were there a lot of NCAA uh, tournament appearances under Andy Kennedy? No, but he absolutely had the hardest job in this this format, though. Have you seen if if Andy Kennedy was in the format we're in now, who would have made it another three times? Oh, oh, yeah, I I completely agree with that. But considering what he did in the environment that he had to coach in, the Tad Pad was an Mm -hmm. abomination to you know, any college environment, let alone a division one SEC school. So he, him making the NIT, which we all laughed about and we're like, Oh man, the, another NIT hell at this point, we would be clamoring for an NIT um, invitation, right? Because what we're getting right now is it's really tough to watch. And every year it has been a struggle to watch. It's not a fun team to watch. Andy Kennedy's teams were fun, right? They had bombers that would just throw it up from anywhere. Marshall Henderson is probably my favorite basketball player of all time from an Ole Miss perspective, just because of the the emotions that he was able to get out of me for a sport that was not my top. Um, but yeah, it is it, basketball is in a bad place, and it's going to be really interesting to see. Keith Carter is going to earn his money this offseason to try to right the ship because hell, I mean, he this was this is his team because he was a great basketball player for the Rebels too. So he may have to, he may have to go ask Lane for a loan. I mean, he, 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 may, he may have given all his money away. <laughs> Yeah, I know that that's it's going to be really interesting. Now let's let's put a positive spin on basketball, right? You know the women, they pulled out a massive upset win in Fayetteville this past week, beating a ranked. I think they're ranked number twenty four. So yeah, this past Sunday, uh, Coach O's team in overtime pulled out a seventy six seventy three win against Arkansas. Now they've got another tough test coming up. They've got Tennessee on Thursday. In Knoxville, so it will be uh, it'll be interesting to see how you're able to overcome not overcome but bounce how you're able to react after a big win like that. It's real easy to kind of get down on your laurels and, uh, and 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 not play well. But you know, hey, let, let's try to find the positives where we can. Interesting question. Um, so I saw something Shaq. So Shaq did. A, I was watching flipping through YouTube Shorts, and Shaq mm-hmm. said that he had a solution for women's basketball. 
Go ahead. He said that he thinks that they should drop the rim so there's more dunks. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like in volleyball, the net's a little lower. What do you? Th- what do you? Th- I mean, I actually, I actually never thought about that. I'm like, man, a lot of these women are close to dunking, but if you put it at nine five, you probably have some dunks, right? Or, or, or not, or a little over nine. What well, you think that'd make it more exciting, or, or, or what? I mean, I, I think. I think- it- I, I, I like think women's sports because I have daughters, but I understand why people do not are not infatuated with softball like I am. Right? Like mm-hmm. I'm in it because my kids are, are in it, and it's awesome. And like, but at the end of the day, like what, you know, the whole argument, hey, what can we do to get you know more viewership to women's sports? And Shaq's idea kind of make me think, like, damn, yeah, if they were if they were dunking on each other, I would probably watch a little more. Yeah, I, I think that that that's actually a really cool idea. I would love to see people I mean that they, they, they move the women forward in golf, right? Like the yep. women play forward in golf, like put that put that rim down, let them dunk a little bit on each other. At the end of the day, it, it is a business, right? And so you've got to be able to get eyes and I think that is an interesting idea. I can't think I wish the men would go to the quarter system like the men have, uh, like the women have done. I think that would be a good change on the men's side. But yeah, I that I hadn't considered that, but I think that would be pretty interesting. Maybe hell drop it down to 9 feet to see I would like to see people getting dunked on, people talking shit to each other. I'm all about that. Let's get all that type of stuff in my sports, and I will absolutely watch. Well, I'll see that clip. His point was, "Hey, like women shoot it well. They they have all the you know they have yep. some good game. The only thing they don't have is dunks. Mm-hmm. Like like they they need some dunks in the game. We need to drop that rim a little bit. So I was like, man, that's interesting. Like uh, that's some some. I guess I would like to see them dunk a little more. Yeah, absolutely. I I think that would be pretty cool. Um, you know, we got do we do have one more uh, sponsor to talk about. I wouldn't be doing my job if I wasn't talking about those Nest and Wild mattresses, right? Powered by decades of experience, passion for improving your quality of sleep, they are always backed by a ninety nine night guarantee. They will help you sleep easy. They're made locally, Tupelo, Mississippi. You can always find them on Amazon or nestandwild dot com. You know, we are getting toward the end of the show, so I always have to do my due diligence and ask how is softball going. Uh, we're getting close to that first tournament. So softball in the last week, I have lined up three scrimmages. So we have a big, you know, well, first off, you know, we had the one show where, where we got a commitment from a five star. Yep. Which so was huge. That, that, that was did numbers. Huge, huge that was numbers huge. on that. That, that immediately took us to a different, you know, level of respect. Yep. Now I have went out and scheduled a few scrimmages versus some local, local teams that are supposed to be pretty good. I don't think anybody around this area has seen the girls that I have. Or, or seen my five star, a couple of my five star. Nobody knows Probably about my not. daughters. I mean, my no. daughters just moved down here. They don't know who who we're bringing in. Yeah. So, like, I don't know that we're going to be as as good as some of team, but I think we're about to sneak up on them. I think they're going to about to be like, oh, that night. Are you saying a sleeping giant has been awoken I, in I'm, Edison, I'm Mississippi? Saying, I'm saying that 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 there that there's a chance. I'm saying that I, I like us, but I play us down. I'm just like, hey, you know, you want to scrimmage? Our girls need the experience. They need to look. Well, then, well, pow, girl throwing fifty on your head. You're going to be like, whoa, okay. This is different. Keeping them humble, I like that. You're yeah, keeping so them we'll humble. We'll see. May, maybe we get pummeled in the scrimmage, and, and I and I'm I, I'm glad I didn't talk a lot of shit yet. So I would actually be. I think that would be pretty cool. I, I would like to hear you uh, dejected on our next show, saying we really got our ass kicked. Is not going <laughs> as well as I expected it to. Oh, dude. Um, I would I, actually. I got, the P, I got the Pete Carroll model. I, I make them feel like they're the best player ever, even if they aren't. And um, you know, we we're, we're gonna have some fun. It's gonna. We got some good girls now. Listen, we we're gonna be all right. I think we're gonna be all right. Okay. I may feel different after, because we do scrimmage this Sunday versus I think that's one of the top two or three teams in the area just because they haven't seen us yet. But, yeah, top two or three teams in the area. Well, once again, we're all waiting uh, in anticipation for the results of that next week. So make sure you like and subscribe so you can get all of your 10, 10-year-old girl softball news uh, <laughs> wherever you get your Chad and Bra- uh, Brad and Chad show podcast. Um, hell, we, we might as well just call this the uh, – you know what was the team name again? Um, we are the Knights Nation. We, we, we're, yeah. we're the Knights organization, which is a typical boys baseball. But now, now we've started the, the softball, which we're down in Madison at, at a facility here. So we may need to talk to our producer Patrick about our, our rebranding here uh, regarding the show and all that type of stuff. We may have to do an overhaul to get those views up. But yeah, always like and subscribe wherever you get the Brad and Chad show. Uh, we'll have some uh, a basketball preview. We'll talk a little softball as well. Not ten year old, but Ole Miss softball is going to be kicking off pretty soon as well next week. So we're going to look at those. Uh, obviously, we'll f- wrap up the uh, the recruiting cycle with uh, the uh, the last round of recruits that are going to be signing from high school with the Rebels. That'll happen tomorrow, February 1st. So make sure you like and subscribe. Get that notification when that new show drops, and we will make sure and keep you up to date, uh, keep you up to date with Ole Miss as well as all the other things in your sports world. Uh, so, Bradley, I hope your next softball practice goes well. Good luck on the scrimmage. And as always, hotty toddy, my friend. See you, Chad. Hotty toddy. 
Thanks for listening to the Brad and Chad Show. Follow the boys on social media for more content. And don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. This has been an OM Network production brought to you by Blue Delta Jeans, made in the USA.